like I mentioned, we are now coming to our last workshop on the topic, Know It All on Generative AI. It's a very interesting topic, needless to say, given that we all are uh, digital today in one way or the other and consume content from sites, social, WhatsApp, etc., and everything is influenced by AI. To help us demystify generative AI, we have with us this morning Ashok Balasubramanian, CEO of OpenWeaver. He's passionate about the countless possibilities that technology brings to people's lives and businesses. Along with him this morning, we have Karthikian and uh, uh, Karthikian Krishnaswamy Raja. Karthikian is the CTO at OpenWeaver. He has uh, extensive uh, experience in technology architecture, enterprise transformation programs, and product design. We also have uh, with uh, Karthikian and Ashok, uh, Alicia, who's a senior developer advocate from OpenViva. So pleasure to have you all uh, here with us this morning. Over to you. Thanks for the warm introduction. I am glad to be part of this session. Hello and welcome to today's workshop on generative artificial intelligence. I am Alicia and I will be anchoring today's session. Artificial intelligence is a field that has been around since 1956 when it was born at a workshop at Dartmouth College. Chatbots were first introduced in 1966 in a work of fiction called Rosam's Universal Robots. The field has come a long way since then to become part of our daily lives. Today, artificial intelligence can be found in almost everything we do, from self-driving cars to smart home appliances from robots to chatbots that help us with our everyday tasks. We can even use artificial intelligence to search for information online and make decisions based on what we find. Creativity is the hallmark of human evolution. The ability to create art is one of the defining characteristics of humanity, even though we don't all make art at the same level. All humans have some level of creativity. It is a part of being human, but not everyone creates art on par with Picasso or Shakespeare. Our brains were designed to be creative, our eyes were designed to see patterns, and our ears were designed to hear sounds. But we are not just born with this ability. We also learn it through practice. And when we practice something over and over again, eventually our brain takes notice and starts working on improving that skill. This is what makes us human. We learn how to create. We learn how to think outside the box or use our imagination or creativity in new ways. We can think up new ideas or come up with solutions to problems that have never been solved before. What if machines can do the same? Generative AI is a very relevant topic in today's fast-paced digital world. Generative AI is used in many applications today. It's a method of artificial intelligence that uses the results of past decisions to create new and potentially better ones. This can be used for a wide range of purposes, from machine learning to self-driving cars, but it's also important for human-centered artificial intelligence systems like chatbots and virtual assistants. In today's session, my co-panelists will be covering the basics of generative AI, how you can use them, and also demonstrate an application you can build. Over to you, Ashok. I am looking forward to an engaging workshop. Thank you, Alicia, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, uh, Justin, for the introduction as well and uh, setting the context. Uh, we really look forward to an exciting session today. And uh, thanks to NASCOM for uh, giving us stage uh, for this interactive workshop. Our previous panelist, uh, Mr. Karthik Shinde, talked about automation, uh, talked about uh, threat security and, and how do you use AI. IA and multiple aspects of it. And uh, things have come a long way. And, and when I used to be part of automation teams at my previous roles, I, I, used, I remember telling people, uh, bots will kind of do the repeated tasks. Uh, you know, they will do invoice processing. They will do network monitoring. Uh, they will do SOP driven tasks. Uh, humans need to focus on creativity. Humans need to focus on you know, doing things differently or Humans need to focus on, on telling bots uh, what you need to do. Uh, so now uh, this is a very, very uh, interesting phase that we're getting into. And, and uh, looking back at my personal journey, I, I may need to take back those words uh, because we're entering into an era where bots or intelligence is able to think and create as well. Uh, though that uh, industry or technology is at its infancy, 
uh, it's it's very important for all of us uh, to reflect on it, uh, understand what those implications are, and and get ready for it. Uh, so without uh, taking further time, I uh, will get into the workshop and uh, I'll share my screen and uh, walk through some interesting uh, slides. Yeah. So what's the textbook definition of generative AI? Uh, generative AI is essentially uh, any artificial intelligence uh, that uses algorithms to create. Uh, digital images, uh, video, uh, audio, text, or code. Uh, and, and you may ask, saying, hey, why only these things, right? I think uh, this probably is a definition of what uh, data is available in today's world today. Uh, so if you kind of uh, break it down and say, hey, maybe test data, of course, not listed here, but it can generate as well. Uh, so forms of AI uh, that can generate uh, images, video, audio, text, and of course, code as well. Uh, is what is termed as generative AI. Uh, and, and later in the session, we'll look at you know, what these technologies are, what GANs are, uh, how they generate, what they can generate, and so on and so forth. Uh, but very important for us to take a moment to say, you know, uh, what, what does such a thing look like? You know, what, does, uh, uh, what is the power of a generated uh, image? Uh, what's the power of a generated video, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so maybe I'll, I'll call back uh, Alicia to kind of you know, walk through uh, what it probably meant. Uh, so if you listen to Alicia uh, over the last uh, three, four minutes, uh, Alicia is a, is a type of uh, generative AI. Uh, not sure if many of you noticed, many of you guessed. Uh, she was generated in our labs uh, through a GAN. Uh, you can choose uh, any different uh, visual representations for uh, the avatar per se. Uh, you can give her text, you can give her or him or they or them or it a voice. Uh, you can give it emotions, uh, you can guide it on emotions, it can learn from emotions. Uh, it, it actually heard me speaking and, and started mimicking what I do. So a brief uh, view for, for all of us to kind of recognize you know, what uh, automation was, what intelligent automation was and, and where generative AI uh, could potentially take us to, right? I think a phenomenal uh, opportunity and, and power in the technology. And while we are at it, uh, look at uh, what went behind the scenes. So for example, you saw Alicia as a face and, and she, of course, uh, did speak from my uh, home office as well. So you see the same background and uh, behind her. Uh, what uh, else, right? Uh, so if you need to know how uh, you could create uh, what you want Alicia to tell, so you could say something, and, and this is again a, a text generator AI, another set of GANs that uh, my co-panelist will walk you through shortly. So you could say things like, you know, creativity is the... So we're probably saying to the bot, saying, say something about uh, creativity, which is a uh, hallmark of human evolution. Let's see. Uh, uh, so it says like that, right? It says uh, you can create, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, it gives you a different thing uh, on, on what to do. Uh, it gives you so many different options, right? So think about it for a moment. Uh, we said, hey, humans uh, can create, bots will obey. Uh, now you're seeing uh, the bot create something as well. Uh, so it's not just uh, text and, and uh, we'll talk about it a little later, but uh, uh, it's how much it can fool the system. So you can say, hey, this is something that I like. Uh, give me more. It, it gives you uh, 10 different speeches like this. Uh, and, and you could have Alicia talk from uh, anything under the sun, right? Uh, so that's the beauty of uh, generative AI uh, that can almost fool human beings. And, and significant part of today's uh, content uh, is co-authored by generative AI. So that's... Uh, a great point of how you could kind of see uh, what's happening in generative AI and, and how that's used in real life. So, so you saw Alicia, uh, you saw how her speech was created. So now you can see you know, how you could create uh, a face of Alicia, how you could create uh, a background for Alicia. So let's say uh, you want to know what uh, Bot thinks about us, right? So let's say virtual, uh, what? Well, webinar. So let's see uh, what generative AI thinks about uh, you, me, Justin, uh, and others as well. Uh, 
So it, it takes time. Uh, uh, like uh, previous panelists were saying, it needs months of data. Uh, but the beauty of it is uh, now that all of our lives have become so digital, uh, your phone, my phone, your photo, my photo is all there in the cloud. So six months of data is, is like a heartbeat. You already have uh, 60 trillion minutes of data from all of us there. So, so, so this is what it says. It says uh, this is what uh, someone looks like who is attending a, a virtual webinar. And, and what it, I did not tell you in the previous one as well. Uh, uh, if you look at intelligent automation, it does what you tell it to do. So if you take, uh, and, and many of you might be students and, and you might have seen Turnitin or, or any other plagiarism checker. So if you take the previous content that I showed you generated from a GAN uh, and submit it into uh, you know, a, a plagiarism checker like Turnitin, uh, it will pass. Uh, it will pass with flying colors because everything is generated. It is not copied or replicated, everything is generated. And if you look at any of these images that is created here, uh, it is copyrighted to this algorithm and to this bot. It is not something that was copy pasted from 10 different places to make. Uh, it understood that someone who is watching it looks like this, uh, someone's screen looks like this, uh, how do those faces appear, how many people typically appear in a screen. So all of this is, is truly generated. So you saw uh, Alicia, you, you saw how her speech was created. Uh, you can see how her virtual background or, or her face can be created. Uh, so now we've seen uh, amazing technology uh, that creates all these you know, cute little bots, right? Uh, that's what uh, we'd like to think, right? So we'd like to think saying uh, humans uh, did all this and, and the bot uh, does what I intended it to do. Uh, I'll quickly switch gears and show you some more fun uh, so that you kind of uh, reflect on what the next years to come might be. So this is a, is a coding platform. So you can tell saying, hey, I need an application uh, that has a list of first names. I need an application that processes last names. Randomly mix those names and tell Justin that these are credit card users uh, that he can buy. So, so that's the power, right? So now I, I don't know coding or I, I would tell you that I don't know coding. Uh, and I tell my uh, algorithm generator saying, hey, can you create a code for me? So give it a minute, uh, it starts writing code. So it says, these are the names, uh, import a randomized function, uh, put in random last names. Uh, how do I put uh, first names, last names? I print it and, and give it to someone and say, say these are uh, valid credit card users or something. You know, It could be anything under the sun, uh, but that's what it says. So think of life as a full circle. You saw a generative AI addressing or opening the session. Uh, you saw how uh, their speech was created. Uh, you saw how images were created. And coming a full circle, you see how all these technologies auto-generate as well. So we'll have to figure out you know, on, on, on what role we play in the future. Uh, but jokes apart, uh, I think extremely promising technology and, and significant opportunity for all of us. Uh, and, and I did see uh, in one of the previous sessions as well that uh, India is going to be the powerhouse of software developers. So now all these uh, billions of developers, we need to now think through uh, how we will align ourselves to this generative AI world and, and how can we coexist or, or build on top of such technology. So we don't want to be in a situation where you write import random first names, last names. You need to be in a situation where you will, you will unleash the power of this uh, for what you would build. Uh, getting into uh, more interesting stuff. Uh, uh, so what are the challenges of generative AI? So you did see a snippet, right? I just wanted to show you because if I went very theoretical, you would say, hey, uh, this is bleep. It's not going to happen to me. Uh, it's going to happen uh, in my kid's lifetime. I, I could vouch for it. It's going to happen in the next couple of years. And, and most of content is written today that way. Uh, so it's, it's now one year. Uh, so what are the challenges of generative AI? So when you start using generative AI, what are the challenges it will face? So I think fake news, uh, I think Justin rightly introduced at start. I think we are in a very, very connected world, right from Chacha Chachi to you, me, to uh, you know, all the news today on what Elon Musk did or he did not do is, is coming to us in multiple social feeds. So 
so a lot of our news is consumed that way, created, consumed in 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 milliseconds across uh, billions of people. So it becomes very difficult to accept and what is fake news. So we saw it during COVID days, uh, all the way to you know, uh, uh, we actually ran a hackathon as part of uh, this summit, uh, and and we could suddenly see people are forming Telegram groups. Someone is telling in Telegram saying, "Here is what you need to download." which is absolutely uh, fake uh, so there is no stopping of fake news uh, or disinformation rather and it's going to be so easy uh, where uh, the bot uh, which is communicating it is is ai uh, and the brain behind it what's generating it is again a massive scale ai so uh, be ready for a world where disinformation is at prime stage so you need to ascertain what you see and and not uh, you know uh, jump the gun instantaneously uh, deep fakes uh, again a huge huge challenge uh, so you maybe some of you were going to message alisha asking for her email or what doubt she could ask so similarly you know there are a lot of folks uh, who impersonate using deep fakes right from you know call centers voice modulation and so on and so forth uh, or you know we see uh, popular celebrities uh, uh, being attributed to something that they did not say so significant uh, dangers in terms of deep fake as well so those are visually seen to you uh, but also what touch upon something that is very deep and inherent but you might not see it very easily so bias uh, is something that is extremely critical uh, and and it kind of reflects the uh, it kind of distills and reflects all the bad things of humanity so for example uh, you know uh, one of the researchers clearly found that when you have uh, a generative ai or a decision engine uh, when it started writing content it always said he for doctors and she for nurses so such inherent biases uh, you know kind of really can go out of scale disproportionately and and we might start using them without knowing and and we might be propagating such biases at scale or, or for example you saw the image generator uh, what color skin tone will it choose if it says it's a software engineer versus what would it choose if it said uh, someone is a astrophysicist uh, so think about it uh, these are inherent biases that uh, systems like these can transmit and and very important for us to watch out and and kind of you know, make sure that uh, uh, we don't propagate such biases uh, shifting gears uh, again this is uh, very uh, uh, dear to me because this is behind the scenes of generative ai so what happens uh, when generative ai uh, is is being created right it, this is not visible to the user or the consumer so three huge things that i wanted to touch upon so one <clears throat> you you saw some of these demos that i showed you so i created it i i used some from somewhere else i used it from maybe a facebook technology or a google technology or or xyz uh, what is their motivation uh, what data did they train it on uh what inherent biases they might have knowingly or unknowingly put it in uh and in today's digital world there is this amazing saying uh, if you are not the customer what are you are you the product who what are you right so it essentially means that uh, if someone is giving you something very easy to use so you have so many such apis available saying hey use my chatbot use my fake news or a, or a deep fake uh, face generator so on and so forth think about it uh, who is creating it what is the authenticity of such a person have they taken care of uh, removing such biases and how do they go about uh, you know monetizing such things so you need to understand the intent so extremely critical in today's world because so much ai is available but it is very expensive to create train and and these lot of these engines are like trillion parameters it it takes uh, uh, dozens of data centers to even understand what it is doing so be very careful in 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 kind of using some of these things and align and and that's where i'm a extremely strong proponent of open source because open source gives you two very very good things it is open means it's auditable but of course i did say it takes a uh, dozens of scientists to even understand what these things do but of course uh, there are more than a dozen scientists who audit open source so go ahead and use open source and second thing in open source is it it democratizes development so you can have thousands of people contribute to that application which inherently will remove bias 
So you'll have people from all walks of life, uh, people from all geographies and, and all uh, different uh, upbringings are putting in. So it will remove all biases. So that's a very, very critical part. Understand who the actors are and, and what their intents are. Second thing which is evolving significantly uh, is IPR. Uh, who owns the IP? So uh, Alicia spoke, well, uh, did I create the content? Did I seed the content? Uh, who did it? You know? And, and very recently, a uh, couple of weeks ago, there was a patent ruling from uh, the US Department of Justice that AI cannot claim patents. So if an AI engine creates an innovation, uh, it, it cannot uh, create or it cannot claim a patent for what it has created. So that picture that you saw, uh, it cannot go and create a copyright because it's a true work of art. It did not exist before, but AI created it. Uh, but it cannot be said copyright Alicia. So think about it. Uh, and the same thing comes and there are a lot of uh, issues as well. So if there are time at the end, we'll talk about some of those issues. And, and lastly, uh, you know, uh, maybe not today, but uh, a lot of you should read the book called Singularity. So how smart can these machines become? So we did see that, you know, ability for uh, a bot to fool you and ability for the bot to create more bots to fool you. So that's the cycle that you saw. And last month we saw, you know, a, a Google engineer who claimed that Lambda from Google is sentient. Sentient means, uh, you know, uh, it's able to, he's able to see emotions in, in that bot. So maybe not true, uh, maybe true, uh, time will tell. Uh, but of course, you know, I, I think how we don't need to get worried about singularity, but, but that uh, level, right? Karthik Shinde talked about uh, intelligent automation. So this is now going to four or five levels above. And, and of course, uh, the, like uh, any other exponential growth, it will grow faster and faster and faster. So it's not going to take next 10 years. Uh, it's probably going to take 10 months uh, or you know maybe two years uh, for something like that. Right? But uh, not all of it is doomed, right? Uh, we are human beings. Uh, we went through... Uh, three, four industrial revolutions are growth. So we will, we will of course, uh, survive. So there are a lot of opportunities. So I wanted to highlight some of them, which are immediate opportunities, right? So test data generation. So we used to write rules and, and stubs to create test data. Uh, e e very easy to do in, in generative AI. Uh, authoring. Uh, so I am I, not ashamed to agree that uh, I do use uh, some of those to uh, augment some of my articles as well. So very useful technology today uh, will not take over what you do, but of course, uh, will, will support you in what you do. Retail, uh, one of my passionate areas, think about retail trial. Today you see a picture in, in Mintra or something that says, hey, here is a shirt. Tomorrow it will tell you, uh, me uh, in a dimly lit ballroom or you know me in a brightly uh, lit uh, home office addressing a webinar. How will I look if I wear that shirt? So it will do all that for you. The magic mirror will, will kind of, you know, uh, adjust to what you will do. Uh, next one is uh, data privacy. So like deep fakes can fool you, uh, we can use the same deep fake technology to kind of see how someone will fool what you're doing. Uh, the movies and media, think about it, uh, how beautifully Alicia spoke. So next time, uh, Allu Arjun will, will only have a pushpa in Telugu. Uh, then AI can go all out and say, here is Pushka in Mandarin. Uh, how would that environment look like? How would the co-actors look like? So it can do all that. We don't need to spend too much time, money and effort. And, and maybe there will be a time where it'll say, hey, uh, you lead actor, don't worry. You know, I've seen enough of your 50 different movies. I will act the next movie. So that day could come as well. Uh, but beyond all those fun and uh, uh, small things that I said, it is being used in very, very critical ones as well. Uh, so prosthetics and, and prosthetics in young children is, is extremely uh, difficult to manage because a child grows every day and the child does a lot of different activities. So simulating how that prosthetic uh, limb will fit on, uh, on and that small child uh, is something that generative AI can significantly help. So a so lot of possibilities. Uh, uh, if you are a, a, a good developer, uh, I think Karthik will now show you, you know, what all you can do and, and how you can adopt some of these technologies, build some of it. Uh, if you are not a deep developer, uh, you, you can use generative AI to write your next novel on, on what's going to happen when Singularity takes over. So with that, 
Uh, I'll, I'll kind of hand over now to uh, my co-panelist, uh, Karthik and Krishna Swami Raja. Uh, over to you, Karthik. Thank you, Ashok, uh, for showing those awesome uses of generative AI technology. Let me share my screen now. Yeah, so I think we saw those amazing use cases of generative AI technology and how they appear so much of you know a, a realistic uh, nature. Let's see what goes underneath those uh, technologies. Okay, so what actually goes into building this generative AI solution? So like any other AI solutions, there are the key components that are available. So you have uh, the uh, training data, then you have the algorithm, and then you use the algorithm with the training data to create a model. A model is nothing but an abstraction of that knowledge, right? So whatever the algorithm learned from the data, it is uh, being abstracted into this model as its knowledge, all right? And then you can use that model to have any action. So it could be prediction, it could be generative, any other action that you want to do. So what is special about generative AI, right? So generative AI, as part of the algorithm training phase, you can have largely two categories. One is a supervised, where you label the training data. It's a very, uh, you know, a hard manual activity, uh, you know, taking a lot of effort and time. Or there's another category, which is uh, purely called as unsupervised, meaning you don't have to do any of the labeling but the algorithm will learn itself from all the data that is being shared. So like Ashok showed, the generative uh, algorithm, if it has shown enough videos of a movie actor acting in a movie, it, it can understand what is an action, uh, what is an emotion, uh, what kind of sequences that he is uh, you know, enacting. Just by looking at uh, those uh, thousands of hours of video, you don't have to label them, this is an action, this is an emotion, those sort of things. So unsupervised really, you know, uh, is breaking ground because now you can actually feed your neural networks with uh, billions of data elements without worrying about uh, labeling or trying to tell the engine what to look for. So the algorithm itself learns and then derives uh, patterns uh, within the data and uses it to create the model, which is the knowledge that it has learned. Okay? So largely for generative AI, there are three broad uh, families of uh, algorithms. The first one is GAN, which is the uh, generative adversarial networks. Second one is the transformers. Third one is the variational auto encoders. So we'll look at uh, all these three in brief in the subsequent slides, but essentially all three belong to the family of uh, deep neural networks. So what is a GAN? So generative adversarial network. Okay, so we saw it in action in uh, Ashok's earlier uh, demo. So what goes underneath that? The key thing with the GAN is that it has got two neural networks, which is the generator and then the discriminator. So discriminator is someone, some type of network which looks at the data and then understands or predicts whether it is a generated data or is it a real data? So you can feed in uh, any kind of data. It can be audio, it can be video, it can be textual, anything that you want to uh, want the engine to learn, so you can feed it. The generator is, uh, again, a special type of uh, neural network which generates data. So it takes uh, a raw input, a limited input, let's say a partial image or a description of an image, and then you ask the engine to create the uh, data. So it could be text, it could be image, but it is a machine generated. And once it goes uh, to the discriminator, the discriminator network compares it with the real data that it has and says whether it is close to real, not so real, or totally you know, fake. So it gives that input back to generator. So the generator and discriminator are competing with each other to see which one can outdo the other one. So generator uh, wants to fool the discriminator. Discriminator wants to always catch the generator, hence the term adversarial. And this is like, you know, the best uh, you know, example of an AI uh, network that are training themselves. So you feed them an initial set of data, and they get into action and then create the best model uh, after a few runs. So where are they useful, right? I mean, they are useful in all the scenarios that Ashok talked about. Primarily, GANs are used in the media world. So anything to do with media, rich media, images, you want to create uh, 
fully generated photographs, you want to touch up photographs, you want to enhance your old photographs, convert a black and white to a color or uh, uh, restore a photograph. You, you want to create new movie scenes, all the computer graphics that you see in um, you know, the uh, Hollywood movies uh, or rather even in Indian movies today. All those areas, uh, these gas can create very, very realistic uh, uh, scenarios, scenes, uh, which you don't have to really go and shoot anywhere. Okay. Other thing is gaming part also. So you can create avatars, you can create, again, scenes, scenarios, uh, different you know opponents in a game. So you can use it in so many fields, right from uh, uh, you know uh, all this uh, multimedia type of uh, scenarios to uh, defense, where you want to train people also using different simulations. You can do that. So GANs will help uh, very deeply there. What about uh, you know availability of all this uh, algorithms, right? So today, uh, open source is very, very much uh, adopted across the world, across enterprises, across AI enthusiasts as well. And there's a lot of uh, models that are pre-trained. There are a lot of uh, algorithms that are available, which you can use to get a head start on implementing this GAN for any of your use cases. Okay, So the TensorFlow, TFGAN, Mimicry, HyperGAN are some examples that are popularly used, which you can actually use to try out uh, a sample use case from this uh, GAN algorithm. The second algorithm that we will go is a transformer, okay? So transformers, what are they actually? What are they, uh, you know, uh, taking care uh, of the special need of generatives? Transformers, uh, essentially, again, like any other algorithm, AI deep learning network algorithm, they have an encoder and decoder, which uh, takes in data and then converts into those uh, numerical bits, right? So, AI works by taking realist data, converts to a numerical representation. And uh, what is special about it, okay? They, we had uh, the uh, CNN, the conventional neural networks, then we had the RNN, the recurrent ones. So they all were there, which are using the encoder and decoder, but they had their own problems as well. So they were not uh, fast enough. They were, you know, performance was less. But one important thing is, uh, the context of you know what you are trying to predict okay, based on the input, uh, there's a context usually attached to it. So when I speak uh, in English, I use different nouns, pronouns, you know, different ways of indicating other things. And unless you hear the whole you know uh, uh, verbiage or whole paragraph, the first line to the last line, you may not understand the context of it. And that was a problem with the earlier. Uh, algorithms, which transformer uh, tried to remove by giving a context to any word, by looking at the previous word, as well as the words that come after that okay, in the next sentences. So though RNNs looked at the immediate uh, you know, words, uh, transformers took it uh, way ahead and it can go, the distance actually could go much farther. That way, the context of what it is trying to learn from, let's say, a sequence of data is still available in the knowledge base. Okay? So where is it applied? Again, it is uh, uh, much useful wherever there is a sequence of data that is available. So you will have, uh, let's say, a sequence of words, sentences, uh, you know, a sequence of video frames as well, uh, audio as well, where you have similar type of data, but which is repeating, right? So you get that... Uh, repeat a stream of data which you can actually train this transformer okay so the special part of transformer is the attention that i mentioned earlier the attention seeking mechanism by which whenever it encodes a piece of data it also includes information about the previous word the next set of words as well uh, when it encodes and that information is available for the decoding part as well so there are some transformers which don't use a decoder uh, but primarily, instead of decoder, they will use some other mechanism to give feedback or when they do a back propagation as well. So as I said earlier, uh, most useful in data which is of streaming nature. So there is a sequence of data. Uh, you can use it to uh, create articles. You can use it to generate uh, software code. You can uh, use it to maybe uh, do an intelligent dialogue with yourself. Okay, And like the uh, GANs, there are enough uh, transformer models available in the open source world to meet uh, 
almost all of your uh, intelligent task activities okay so popular ones come from the bird family bloom is a recently uh, launched one the gpt the generative pre trained model is another large model which keeps on evolving so you have uh, models that actually take uh, you know uh, billions of uh, parameters to get trained so the gpt1 after that uh, you know earlier one we used to take 175 billion but then it they surpass it and there is at least you know half a trillion parameters as well the last one is the variational auto encoders which is slightly older in nature and it is also using an encoder and decoder but essentially what it used to do is not you know do the encoding uh, for each piece of the data uh, and then have their knowledge build but what it will do is that it will generalize the uh, data that is fed for training and then use the statistical uh, uh, you know uh, measures uh, you know so the standard deviations to understand how it can be represented in the smallest uh, space okay and with that it can actually generate slight variations so it most useful for let us say generating uh, you know synthetic data for training your ai models okay so today you can see there is lot of gan plus vae that is in place you can also see transformer plus vae that is in place trying to you know help each of this uh, getting uh, trained better so there are again open source models available with them also great so now we looked at the key components so time for small demo of uh, different use cases the fake news deduction is one of the demo that you know i'll quickly walk through ashok talked about it in the uh, Uh, earlier uh, talk as well like any other ai solution it has uh, different elements and uh, if you look at uh, uh, the fake news so there is a code that is there which actually creates the training data and then post the creation of the training data that has the news article right and it is uh, you know uh, kept as uh, a csv file so you have various news text articles which are labeled okay so it is fake real so you have lot of this news articles that are labeled and then it is gets you know fed into a algorithm which will actually take it uh, run the training and post the training the model is built and after the model is built you can look at the evaluation parameters to understand the performance of it and then you can do the prediction part of it as well so for the prediction what we have done is that we have just kept uh, some of the news articles in a csv file and then run the prediction algorithm which will predict whether it is fake and real so this is a demonstration of Uh, quickly you can use a ready to use model uh, fed feed data to it to get trained and then predict as well okay the second example that i wanted to also walk you through is uh, paraphrasing okay so paraphrasing uh, is you give a sentence and how you can have different variations of the sentence itself okay so again this one is built using the t5 model which belongs to the generative family and in this model uh, you have the call the code that is actually training uh, the model as well as you know executing the model for us so i'll directly go to a section where you can have an interactive uh, shell so enter a phrase uh, which you want to uh, paraphrase so for example i'm entering which places to visit in india for racial diversity yes i need different uh, variety so it takes that as an input and runs it yeah maybe i let it sleep for quite a while yeah so it took few seconds so it creates different variations right i mean which places should be visited in india which which are the good places to visit in india so you can create different variations which you can use as part of your conversation or even for training okay so this one uses the t5 transformation model the other uh, example that i wanted to also show was the next word predictor so this one uh, is using the gpt2 which we earlier saw as part of the transformer one of the very large models and the use case is that you want to use this for building software which predicts the next word which you would have seen in your smartphones or your you know in my email type in software as well uh, but uh, this one is using the most uh, you know advanced uh, algorithm the gpt family and likewise you know just a few lines of code you use a pre trained model you import it okay and after importing you it's ready to just you know run it so for example i'll go to this interactive shell and then let me type a sentence uh, thanks for being part of and press enter and then it suggests like you know the this could be some of the variations uh, for the next word 
so let me say i use choose this word okay the word this thanks for being part of this and then presenter and it suggests community as the first one so thanks for being part of this community of ai enthusiasts so that's exactly what i would also would have liked to tell you okay and i think that brings us to a close of this demo so all this is the very uh, few lines very small few lines of code you can use the freely available open source models and then try to get a you know, head start with building your solution i have also shared this you uh, know uh, all this you uh, know code in uh, candy.opener.com you can uh, search for them and then also download and use this to get a head start for your learning needs as well thank you again uh, for giving this opportunity uh, to nascom uh, back to you uh, ashok thank you kartik uh, i think that was a very good demo uh, i'll i'll share my screen a bit uh, for kind of walking through so uh, you did talk about uh, how simply we could use some of these technologies uh, and uh, how they are useful uh, uh, in in simple things and, and the close was very nice i really liked how uh, you use generative ai to thank audience for being part of the ai community so very very simple easy to use use cases uh, so if you all of you want to download it go to candy.openviewer.com uh, you will get all of these that you can you know fully open source solutions or github or whatever that you use uh, to play around with some of these so as part of this nascom event we also ran a mini hackathon uh, uh, this weekend uh, with the same uh, same intent that we asked uh, young developers to build applications to combat fake news Uh, and we had very interesting submissions and uh, here are the winners so first one is uh, sauro banerji uh, he essentially created a a fake news detection application using passive aggressive classifier so uh, great uh, uh, degree of uh, predictability from the solution so third prize goes to sauro uh, second prize goes to anya uh, essentially uh, solution was uh, you know a good Uh, interface so you could submit a website and it could tell you what fake news is there and so on and so forth so you can choose uh, where you consume your news from uh, in the future uh, and the first prize uh, goes to aswad uh, so that solution was more real time uh, so solution integrates with telegram api uh, and lot of us face that right so you see something in whatsapp and then you don't know if it is real or not so this solution will tell you in real time Uh, if your telegram or or potentially whatsapp feed uh, is is real or not so uh, that concludes uh, the session uh, just in a few minute maybe i could take uh, some of the common questions that people might be interested or maybe i can respond after the event as well so the first uh, common question that i uh, could see uh, and, and probably that uh, everyone could be interested the question essentially says uh, it does generative ai Uh, create or does it uh, concatenate uh, so i think it's a uh, very good question and uh, I, i think uh, it's a million dollar question so maybe you might get a a nobel prize for answering it uh, so it's like this right so i think uh, all of us uh, learn something uh, and and we reflect on that learning and and we uh, put out something else so uh, in a similar way uh, Uh, ai observes uh, multiple things uh, ai uh, kind of correlates multiple things uh, what it has looked at from multiple dimensions so that's why if you look at kartik's example he said a first few models were billion parameters now we are uh, exceeding trillion parameter models so it, it is able to reflect on on so many different parameters to give you an answer so i think it's more philosophical uh, Uh, but if you kind of put uh, asset test saying hey does this deliverable exist in this form today uh, it does not uh, and uh, uh, in in that sense uh, uh, it is uh, fully creating something that is net new uh, versus old and technology where you would say you know in an faq here is a question here is an answer if you ask that question it will give you the answer so it's it's way more beyond that and and some of those uh, small demos that uh, kartik showed that all of you could implement in 30 minutes and try it out uh, so great opportunity for everyone to try some of these things next question coming in i think which also is a little bit uh, broader and i'm just picking up uh, some of these questions which are not uh, very deeply technical that might not be useful to everyone i think next question is uh, 
yeah, I think it's probably a follow-up from that uh, DOJ thing saying, hey, what is the copyright for something that AI created? So if I'm a developer uh, and, and I created something, uh, I, I created a AI code, uh, I own copyright for it. Uh, but that AI code that creates something, uh, I think the jury is still out that says, uh, who owns copyright to it? Uh, and very interestingly, we have seen a lot of very deep challenges that have come out in that area. So, for example, uh, Free Software Foundation uh, is one of those champions of open source. Uh, recently, they started something called as boycottgithub.org. Uh, essentially, the challenge comes in is because they're saying, hey, GitHub, including me, uh, about 70 million people have put our code into GitHub. Uh, and there are AI generative AI that actually reads all those code from GitHub. Uh, and the demo that I showed you uh, is, is one of those that actually has been trained on GitHub code and it now writes code. And someone is now charging $10 a month for that code, uh, but it learned from me. Uh, so is it my copyright or is it that uh, corporation that monetizes it? Is it their copyright? Uh, are they? right in monetizing it. Uh, so I think uh, uh, that's going to evolve significantly and, and everything, right? Even the text generator has learned from maybe something that you put on Wikipedia, the image generator, probably some Android uh, app told you that you get free storage for life and you put your photos there and probably learn from it. So I, I think that jury is out. Uh, I, and I think this as an industry uh, will evolve. So I, I think I will leave it at that because I'm not a, a, a lawyer to pass judgment. But again, a very interesting field, but I would kind of want to close by saying uh, there are such amazing opportunities coming up. Uh, invest in the future while you kind of upskill and, and try out all these applications and, and stay connected. So thank you everyone for attending. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, thank you, Justin. Back to you, Justin. Well, thank you, Ashok, uh, Karthikeyan, and I must include uh, Alicia as well, given that we just experienced AI at its virtual best. Thank you all for that interesting and informative workshop. With that, we conclude a very interesting first half of the sessions. See you all back again at 2 p.m. for an interesting and power-packed afternoon session. Mm -hmm.